Hey everybody, so uh, we got a cold and rainy day out here in Virginia. It's not a really good day to be out sawing lumber or really doing anything else for that matter. So I, I'm inside here in my garage and I thought I'd make a video about a tool that's really important to, to many of us and that is a bubble level. Or if you know, you're an old timer, you might call this a spirit level. Um, if you're doing any sort of carpentry project, masonry project, uh, or even just trying to run your sawmill and keep things, you know, uh, accurate and um, uh, working the way they're supposed to, you're going to be using one of these a lot. Now, unfortunately, um, these have some pitfalls. Uh, they can be used the wrong way, and they can also get out of whack and give you very misleading uh, results. And actually, I've been the victim of that once. I, I built an entire loft once with a bad level and stood back and looked at it at the end. It was very crooked to the eye. Um, so I want to talk about how these work um, talk about how you should use them and then show an example of a couple levels that have gotten out of whack and uh, we'll see if we can uh, correct them and, and get them back to uh, reading properly. So stay tuned and we'll get started. Okay, I've got a bunch of uh, different levels here on my workbench and before we talk about some things, I want to go over the basics of, of how these bubble levels work. Uh, really, the, the general principle you're going to see in all of these is some sort of a vial filled with a liquid. It often has a fluorescent dye in it for visibility. And then it'll have a little air bubble in it. And these vials are gonna be arranged so that that bubble floats to a known location uh, under some particular angle or orientation. And it lets you make a reading. It's, it's pretty much as simple as that. And you can have these vials oriented to measure horizontal level, vertical plumb, you can orient them to measure 45 degree angles. You can actually have a curved vial uh, where the bubble floats through a whole range of different positions and, and measure incline from, you know, basically zero to 90 degrees. And so these can be set up to uh, work a bunch of different ways. In the case of, of the levels that were on my workbench here, um, generally these vials are gonna be set up one of two ways. One is you could have a vial that's made out of soft plastic and when it's snapped into mounting points on the level, it gets a bend in it or a curve in it and that puts a high spot in the middle of that vial. So the bubble's gonna wanna float to that high spot. The other one is you could have a vial that's molded to be fatter in the middle and uh, that also creates a high spot in the middle and the bubble's wanna, gonna wanna go to that uh, position on your level. And so here's an example of a level that has those curved vials and you know these just became curved when they were snapped into the uh, little tabs there in that uh, uh, window on the level. Uh, the interesting thing you know when you have this kind of setup you're really going to need two vials because um, you know if you bend this vial to a curve uh, you know that curve is only going to have a high spot in one orientation of the level. If you flipped it it's going to become a low spot so here you always need two vials that are bent in opposite ways. Here's a torpedo level that just has a single vial and you can't really tell from the camera here but this one uh, is a little bit fatter in the middle of the vial so the bubbles uh, always going to try and work towards that middle uh, when it's level and you know most of these levels the, the two we just looked at they'll have two marks on the vial and the idea is well you center the bubble between the marks and you're reading level or you're reading some angle that it's designed to tell you. But there's actually another type of marking you'll often see in vials, and that's shown over here. You'll have some extra marks, and these are generally used to indicate a typical slope that you might be using in construction. Uh, in this case, these marks, if the bubble uh, moves to touch one of those outer marks, that's indicating a eighth inch per foot slope and that's something might you might use in concrete work on a patio or a garage floor to uh, promote drainage so that's a very typical type reading you're going to see in these levels okay so here I've sorted out my collection of levels into basically two groups the ones against the uh, the wall there uh, those are reading correctly and then everything else is out of whack and needs to be fixed or thrown away. And uh, you know, some of these levels, um, 
these are these front two are they're pretty old they're probably 30 years old they've been used on construction crews they've they've seen it all um, i've adjusted both of these levels before the, when levels are older or if you get a new one that's a more expensive level they will be adjustable and, and you can recalibrate them uh, to work again if they get out of whack if they get dropped or broken or whatever um, and this one you notice it's got an X scratched in it. At one point, that vial was no longer reading right. And so, you know, the guy who was using that level just put an X on there and basically, you know, don't don't read that vial. But I years ago, I recalibrated that one and got it working correctly. But um, as of now, all three of these guys are out of whack. And then I've also checked these guys. These little squares have a, a, a bubble level in them. And then this, uh, this is a T-bevel you can use to measure angles. That's also got a bubble level in them. Uh, all of these are out of whack. They're, they are reading off. And these cannot be adjusted. So you'd either want to put a mark on these so that you know not to trust those bubble levels or, or throw them out. I, I wouldn't have any hope that you could buy a new one and expect a lot of accuracy, especially when they're molded out of plastic nowadays. But, uh, you know, here's an example of something that you're not gonna be able to fix. And so uh, you just can't trust these and um, you know you, you gotta use these accordingly. Now, now all these tools, their, their main purpose is something other than a level, so I'm not really worried about that. In fact, I rarely use these guys, but for sure I'm gonna be putting an X over these because they're just not trustworthy as a uh, bubble level anymore. So now, you might be wondering how you can tell if a level is reading incorrectly. And I know a lot of people think, well, you should, you know, bring it to a true table in a machine shop that's known to be level and try it out there. And, and that's that's certainly great, but there's a much simpler way. And I'll show that here on this, um, this old guy here. Um, and so you can see this guy uh, the bubble is off to one side, off to this mark, okay? And, well, first of all, I, this workbench is not that old. I know it's not that bad. I mean, I was drinking a little bit of beer while I built it, but I know it's it's pretty level. So, you know, that's the first clue that this guy is not reading right. But to really tell, um, what you can do is make a, make a mental note of your reading um, in one orientation of level, and then I'm gonna pick up this level and I'm gonna spin it around 180 degrees. I still leave the up up and the down down. And we'll come back and, and put it by the way, put it put it down in the same spot on your measuring surface. And now we come over here, and now that bubble is off in in this direction. Okay? And that's a quick way to tell that your bubble level is no longer accurate. When you flip it around helicopter style, 180 degrees, uh, doesn't matter what the slope of the surface is, you should get the same reading in both directions. And when you don't, and in fact, in this case, it's real obvious because the bubble flipped uh, to opposite, touching opposite lines. If you don't see the same reading in both directions, then you know that level is bad and uh, you know, if it's a uh, newer level like these ones back here, well, those are not adjustable. So if the, right now those are all reading good, so that's good. Uh, but if they were not, I can't do a darn thing about those levels. You, you know, either have to only use them as a straight edge or throw them out and get new ones. But uh, these older levels or a high quality new level, they're gonna have screws you can loosen up and you can actually gently reposition this vial and keep testing it. And once you get to the point where it gives you the same exact reading on um, both directions when you spin it around like a helicopter, uh, then you know you've made that adjustment properly and the, the level uh, can be used again. Now, similarly, you've got these other vials uh, that are meant for vertical readings. Same thing there, hold it against a vertical surface rotated 180 degrees, propeller style in that case. And if you don't see the same reading in both orientations, then you're gonna wanna uh, adjust this as well. So uh, I'm gonna set up the camera here, 
we'll uh, loosen that up. I'll show you how it can be adjusted and we'll see if we can get this guy uh, reading uh, uh, better than it's doing now. Okay, so I'm gonna just loosen up the screws holding this uh, window in. And uh, already I can tell there's a lot of gunk in there. It looks like some sawdust and some concrete. This this level is used a lot for concrete work. And so it's not surprising there seems to be some sand in there. So I'm gonna take that window out. And most of these you can pull the vial out and I'll put that off to the side and um, flip it over. And, and I, you don't really need to take the windows all the way out, but uh, because there's so much junk in here, um, I'm going to take them both out and uh, try and wipe, wipe this down. I'm going to wipe down in here. I mean, I can see there's concrete in there. Can't Concrete can't be good for precision measurement like that. And there's some sand. I'll clean that out. Same thing on that side. And I'll go over these windows and just make sure there's nothing loose there that's going to get in my way. Okay, so, and I don't know if you can tell from the video, but um, the holes in the plastic window are probably about twice as big as the screw diameter used to hold the windows to the level. And so, that's gonna give us uh, just a little bit of slop so that we can uh, move the window, which is holding the vial and, and position it relative to that uh, beam. And that's pretty much how all these adjustments work. They just build in enough of a slop that you can uh, gently rotate this. And uh, you'd be surprised. I mean, this is only an inch and a half wide. It does not take much rotation of the, the window and the vial to, to move the bubble from one end to the other. So it's a very sensitive adjustment and there's there's plenty of uh, adjustment to work with. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna put one of these windows back in. I'll leave the screws loose. In this particular level, the screws are tapped into the aluminum the, of the beam itself. Uh, some of them I've seen where the screws just go through and it, the two windows will kind of just uh, pinch. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just leave these screws, well, I don't know, quarter turn shy of snug so that I know I can move the window but quickly be able to tighten it down. And then I'll put the vial back in carefully. Make sure that's not going to move. And then we'll put this other window back on. And again, leave the screws loose on this guy as well. Make sure that's in there. Now, by the way, I'm talking about, you know, how to check for level and correct it on these beat up old levels. Uh, if you're buying a brand new level at a store, you know, do the same check. Put it down on the floor, flip it both directions, make sure it's reading the same thing. Doesn't matter if the floor is level or not. You should see the same reading, both orientations of that level when it's brand new. If it's not, don't buy that one. Um, people might think you're your nut job for, for checking levels uh, at the store, but believe me, it's important. And uh, I would not assume that a brand new level is, is gonna be accurate. So um, do do that check even, even on a new level. Okay, so we're ready to adjust this guy. And again, we're just gonna basically position the vial until it's reading correctly, and then snug the screws down. And uh, I'm gonna try and set up a different camera angle for that so we can see how that process goes. Okay, so this is right before I'm gonna make an adjustment. And I just wanted to give you an idea by spinning these vials. You can see how much that bubble can be moved side to side. I'm only cranking it a little bit here, but uh, there's quite a bit of slop in there that we can use to 
get that bubble uh, adjusted. So um, what I'll probably do, I mean, again, you wanna flip this, or you wanna do the 180 turn, helicopter style this, um, and check that it's the same bolt direction. So that's kind of gonna be a trial and error uh, approach. Uh, but I'm gonna start, I know this workbench is pretty darn close to level, so I'm gonna start by trying to get this thing reading uh, as close to level as it'll let me adjust and then snug the screws down on one side. Okay. And so, I mean, that's dead, that's dead in the middle now. So we'll do our quick test and do a helicopter flip. Put it back in the same place. Hopefully the camera sees it. And well, darned if it isn't good there too. So um, I, I guess I got it right on the first guess uh, just by using the workbench as kind of a, a starting point. So I'm gonna snug these guys up. And uh, check it, that looks good. So I'm gonna flip it one more time. Put it back in the same spot. Check it again and yeah, it's, it's reading level and it's the same in both directions. And again, being the same in both directions is the most important thing. It doesn't matter if your surface is level, it really needs to read the same. So uh, this is good, that's a pretty simple adjustment. Now this uh, 30 to 40 year old level is, you know, back in rotation as a trustworthy device. And really the last thing I want to do is finish snugging up those screws and uh, you're good to go. And so from here, um, you know, I'll repeat this procedure with the, the uh, plumb vials that are there to indicate vertical plumb. Uh, to do that adjustment, I'll just hold them up against the doorway. Again, flip them, this time propeller style, make sure I get the same reading um, of both orientations. If not, loosen up the screws, clean up the vials and the windows if needed. And uh, again, you know, keep tweaking uh, until you get the same level uh, or same reading in, in both orientations. So, um, that'll take care of this guy once I finish that. Then I'll move on to this guy. This one will be a little bit more complicated. Um, these levels that have twin vials, um, if you're lucky, you'll be able to get them both back into reading accurately with an adjustment because you really can only adjust both of them together. You can't adjust them individually. Uh, so if one of them is off but not the other, you know, there's not much you can do about that, but hopefully you know, I'll be able to do the same thing here. Loosen these screws, spin the window uh, until I can get the same reading in both orientations and, and uh, uh, bring this guy back to life. And then this last one, um, oh, you can't see it on this side, but over here, this one only has two screws um, on that center one and then the same thing on the end ones, but this will be the same deal. Um, in, in this particular arrangement, the screws aren't threaded into the aluminum, they're going through to the other side, but um, you know, I know from the past when I loosen these up, they will be slop in that mounting window and uh, allow this level to be calibrated um, just like the others. So hopefully that's some useful information for you, you know, on how, to, how the levels work, how to use them, um, how to how to readjust them when they get out of whack. And I, I guess if I wanna leave you with one thought is don't just blindly trust the level, whether it's a new level in the store or an old level, just do a quick sanity check before you use that level, you know, put it, put it down on a surface or up against a vertical surface, flip it 180 degrees, make sure you're getting the same reading um, in both orientations. And, you know, do that often. I mean, certainly before you start a new job or before you're going to do anything important, you know, check your levels, make sure they're, they're still good. Uh, if you can keep these things um, checked and, and tested and, and trustworthy, you know, these are invaluable tools uh, for, for all sorts of projects. 
So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.